All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Lasting Learning Podcast. You're in for a treat this week. This week, we have a guy on here who is going to just inspire us. He's going to empower us. He's going to coach us and change us. I was just telling him before we went live, he better bring it big today because he's down in Ohio and I'm up here in Michigan and it takes a lot for me to bring an Ohio guy on the show. But, you know, it's something about the, the Teach Better team. They feel like everybody they're bringing on is an Ohio person and, and Dr. Gupta, you are one of them as well. Neil, thank you so much for being here tonight. Well, no, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, I agree that the rivalry is real when it comes to football and the other sports between Ohio State and Michigan, but man, there's some great ed leaders in Michigan like you, and um, I just love love the ability to collaborate like this. It's awesome. Man, I, I appreciate it so much. So, you know, there might be a couple people out there that don't really know your work. I don't know how that's possible, but it, it is possible. You know, this is reaching to the other side of the world. So maybe there's people over there that have never heard of you. Can you just take a few minutes and tell us your story? Who are you and what are you about? Yeah, so um, I get to serve as the director of secondary education. So I receive middle schools and high schools in a Columbus, Columbus suburban district um, in, in, here in Ohio. And um, my journey has been unique in the respect of um, after, after graduating from college, high school math teacher, I uh, went back to my hometown, got to, got to teach in uh, the, the same classroom areas where I was a student, um, a very rural community, um, small community. Um, which meant that as, as leadership was able to pour into me, I was able to get, get my hands dirty in a lot of things. You know, when you're in a small district, you, you become the jack of all trades quickly. And um, so that allowed me to be able to, um, I don't know if I became an expert in any one thing, but really, you know, hone, hone a craft and, and uh, meet people. And uh, just through my journey, um, I've always been able to quickly find out if I don't know the answer to something or somebody, I, I know how to find people. And uh, so um, even before there was Twitter and, and all the other different social media apps, just um, going to conferences and talking to people and picking up the phone and, and getting to know people um, allowed me to, to I think, um, you know, at that early stage, really get to know people uh, here in the Columbus area. And uh, through that, I was able to um, move down with my, my family to uh, uh, the suburban districts, and um, it's, it's been phenomenal um, because the leadership is intense. We find out that really the trust issues that we have in our districts, the challenges we have in our districts, um, regardless of Ohio or uh, with Michigan or anywhere else, um, it's, all, it, it, it's not unique. We, we all have the same things, but, but the leadership journey that we have in, in our community is, is just um, phenomenal. So because of that, I've been able to um, do some different things. At the state level, I'm, I'm a, a serving on the board for our Secondary School Administrators Association. Um, ASCD is uh, something that um, is, a, is a national, international organization for uh, not just curriculum and development that it used to be, but now it does a lot more for the whole child and um, things that happen with that. And uh, so last year, I've, I've got to, uh, my, my first year, I've been serving on the board of directors for that. So that's given me an opportunity to give back to an organization that I love. And so it's given me an opportunity to connect more with leaders. And then just recently, we made the announcement uh, this past month um, the Teach Better. If you don't know anything about Teach Better, go check it out. Um, but uh, they put together a, a speaker's network. And uh, so there are some experts, leaders um, from all different areas of, of uh, levels and uh, vocations and interests that are across the United States. And uh, so I get to be a part of that. So that, that's also just been a, a recent um, great news that, that, that's still kind of unfolding on how we're gonna, we're gonna go in and help other educators um, across the country. It's, it's pretty cool, man. You've got quite the resume for, <laughs> for a, a regular old Midwestern guy. You know, from peop for people that are, that are around the country don't really know what the Midwest is about. It's just good people working hard every single day, trying to do what's right. And you're from Columbus. And I hate to say this, but I'm going to compliment Columbus. I mean, Columbus is kind of like the heartbeat of America. It really is. It's, it, people don't realize how big it is. It is a, it's a pretty big metropolis. And you're in the suburbs truly teaching the, the heartbeat of America. Do you, do you feel that? Do you feel like, yeah, you are just all America? I mean, you're America, Mr. Americana? <laughs> I don't know about Mr. Americana, but you know, it's not uncommon for 
Um, obviously, phenomenal conferences to, to be happening here in the Columbus, Ohio. And um, so it, 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 has, it hasn't been uncommon that uh, um, I, I tell my wife, uh, we, we've got a, been generous enough to have a, a nice house and a, a guest room. And um, so whenever we have ed leaders that are coming to come speak at a conference here in Columbus, um, I, I always kind of offer up my house. And uh, it's funny because I'll be telling my wife, you know, sometimes the night before, I'm, I'm like, honey, hey, we got to get that guest room ready. And, uh, you know, it's funny because she'll say, well, you know this person, right? And I said, oh, yeah, I've known them for, you know, five years. And she said, you've met them before, right? Nope, never met them before face to face. It's been through <laughs> Twitter and social media and things. And, and she said, now they're going to sleep across from where our kids sleep, right? And you're okay with that. And I said, I'm always great with it. And, and they, they come over and they spend time. And my wife is like, these are great people. And um, so, you know, it, it always just comes with that unique part. But I, again, it's this idea about building that professional learning network. And uh, so one time we actually had um, um, Lavana Roth came, came to town and uh, we had an Indian food truck parked outside invited about 30 different um, educational leaders from the Columbus area. And we just kind of hung out at the house, had some Indian food and, and, you know, naturally just talk shop. It was awesome. That's amazing. That's amazing. You know, it, it, you don't, you don't know this, but a couple of months ago, um, Ray Hewitt from the teach better team was trying to, to make some connections happen or whatever. And she mentioned your name and I felt myself playing six degrees from Neil Gupta. It seemed like everybody is connected to you somehow, some way. Where, where does that come from? Where did this, this desire for this Ohio guy who's back teaching basically at home, where, where did the desire come to, to network and connect with so many people all over the place? Yeah, so, you know, I, I really think it comes from my dad. So he, he's an eye doctor. But, um, you know, I tell that story, now that I think about it, now that I tell that story about my house and, and how, you know, now I've got, I'm going to have a thousand people, you know, asking to kind of stay at, at the Gupta house, which is fine. It's okay. Um, you know, but my dad kind of had that same mentality of, of just people coming to stay at the house. Um, you know, I think early on, I realized, you know, we, we're, especially in that small district that, you know, we have to be able to reach out to others to learn from one another. Um, and so I, I think one thing that, that has really helped me out, and, and I think this idea about when people ask about, you know, why should I get involved in a social network and why should I be part of a professional learning network? Why do you get on Twitter? Um, I know there was, there was one time uh, when I moved in this newest, newest district and I tried to write a grant um, and I about had 40 hours to write a grant on a makerspace. And I remember I just, I, I just kind of shifted out to Twitter and said, anybody that's ever written a grant about makerspace, send it to me. And I got back like 30 grants. And so I was able to cobble together. I mean, they were already obviously vetted with resources that people had used. Here's the research that they'd already gone through. And, um, you know, I was able to piecemeal things together to, to write this phenomenal grant. And it's, it's story like that after story that say, you know, when, when um, you know, people think, why do people get on, on these uh, networks? And why are they up till 10 o'clock at night talking with, with people from other parts of the United States? You know, what's the benefit for it? Well, first of all, we enjoy it because this is not just what we do as a day job, but we do it because it's part of who we are. It's our passion. But second of all, um, people will sometimes say, it's self-serving. What you do is self-serving. No, no, no. I keep bringing back great information that, that we use in our district. And so Ray Hughard is a, is a great example of there are times where, you know, I run into a wall with a question and I know that I can go to somebody for an answer. And Ray has been one that I can constantly go to and ask her questions about how we can help be better and do things for our students. Uh, that's good. But just, just so you know, it's not normal for, for people from small towns to feel like they have to reach out to get better. I, I, think, I think this is a, it's a you thing. I think it's the natural tendency for, for all of us to say it's good enough. Where, where we are right now is good. Let's just maintain where we are. Let's not fall backwards. But you're always reaching out and trying to not only make you better, but make your systems better, make your schools better, and make all of us better. So it, it's not normal. That's a, that's a compliment to you sure. that you do this not just to grow yourself and fill your passion, but you are truly committed to helping other people grow. Right. You know, I, I, I appreciate that. I mean, I, you know, it, it's, it's humbling to, to hear that experience. It's funny because I was just having this conversation last week. Uh, so Megan Anderson is another ed leader. And uh, she's down in the kind of the Columbus, Cincinnati, halfway in between. And she's out in the sticks. She's back out in the rural area, definitely. And um, she, she drove up to Columbus. They had a day off of due to, to the illnesses that are going on. 
um, the flu season, and so the whole school was shut down. And what do you do on your day off? She drove up to Columbus, spent the morning with Dwight Carter, um, who's about 30 miles away from me, another ed leader who I got a chance to work with uh, for at least a year or two, and uh, spent the morning with him. And then, and then we got to spend a couple hours and have lunch together. And, you know, we talked about this idea about how you have to seek it out and find it, you know, and, and you know, we talked about it. everybody doesn't always believe that you're right. Um, but we, we, you know, find ourselves to be that, that few that are able to go out and seek one another. Um, and then when you find out that there's only a few in your own state, you start to kind of realize that you've got to connect with others from other states also. And it, and it just becomes, like I said, this neat family that when conferences happen, we get together, um, you break bread and you start getting excited about that. And again, my wife kind of scratches her head and says, that's weird, but it, but it's really beautiful. <laughs> it, it, it is weird, but it, it's so good. And, you know, there are those naysayers out there that will make the statement that it's so self-gratifying. And I would say, in a way, it, it is. It is self-gratifying and that's, that's totally okay. But it, it's not to put yourself up on a pedestal and to elevate yourself but it does fill your bucket. That's, that's why I do this. So I can have conversations with people like you because it fills me up and we need that. If we're constantly talking to ourselves and we're only in our own head, that's self gratifying. That is selfish reaching out and hearing from others and, and allowing your voice to resonate with them. It, it, it just magnifies and amplifies the, the voices that need to be heard. So, so kudos to you, man. So what is it, what is it that, that you're working on right now? I know that you do a lot just in your, in your day job working with secondary schools. Sure. But beyond that, I mean, you are out there, you're coaching people, you're uh, working with leaders, you're growing systems, growing schools. And I know something that you talk about a lot is design thinking. Can you talk through that concept? Because there are people out there that are saying, what does that even mean? I have no clue. Just talk through what, what's in your head. Sure, sure. That, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a passion for me. And, and that's in my day job is that, um, you know, I remember uh, speaking at one of my first conferences that I was I was asking a keynote and uh, they, they had I said, what do you want me to talk on? What, you know, they sought me out. And interestingly, they sought me out based on um, blogs that I've written. So they never even saw me present. They never saw me speak. This was in a, in a you know, a different country. And um, I said, well, how did, how did you find out about me? And they said, well, we read your blogs. So that was kind of, first of all, a unique, you know, kind of uh, um, approach to begin with is, is, is to be kind of known by something with that. And then I, I asked them, is there something you're lo looking for? He said, what we're looking for is, is we want to hear where you made your mistakes. We want to know, you know, we don't want you to come in and tell us, you know, everything's beautiful in education and everything's easy. Tell us where you made mistakes in your pain points and what you could have done differently. And, you know, through that, thinking is that perfect definition of, um, especially what I do in my day job, regardless of what the initiative or the act activity is, there's a certain thought process that I run through as um, when I go into a, um, an initiative for, um, you know, how we're designing our master schedule, um, how we're, we're, we're tackling, you know, tackling a, a problem or an issue with um, our new graduation requirements. Um, what we're talking about when we think about our math curriculum and, and how I thought with that. And so it's this idea about really these steps that are, that are um, out of the business sector, but really they, they obviously make great transfer into education um, and they be, come out based on lessons learned. You know, a, a simple one is really taking the time to define really what the, the issues are. Um, we, we laugh about how um, it, it took us a while as, as we were thinking about doing some curriculum mapping work and um, it, it took about a year for us to really define, do we all understand there were about six, six different curriculum director, you know, um, uh, coordinators, you know, a math coordinator and a language arts coordinator. And these are the best of the best sitting around the table. And when you start saying curriculum maps, we all can have our definition in our head of what we, what we think that that looks like. But if, unless we really spend time to say, what do we, let's spend time in, in that stage first before we jump into things. The tendency is we, we jump too fast because we, we you know, think that we all understand what the common definitions are, the parameters are, and we start doing things. And then we find out in step 10 that we really you know, had a, a problem at, at the foundational step of, did we all agree on the terms, the terminology? And so design thinking says, let's first start there and really, let's first really start to understand this. Do we all agree? Or are we on the same page with, even what the definition of terms is. Um, and then this idea about, uh, about challenging our assumptions really comes into it also. Um, the idea about prototyping, I know I'm gonna go fast, but prototyping, 
we tend to we tend to um, you know spend a lot of time in the planning phase and then we go straight into implementation and um, you know really things you know and it makes sense when I when I'm about to say this but things are in an iterative cycle um, we we tend to learn from you know early early designs and so instead of saying we're going to take you know in a 10 month span instead of spending nine months planning and preparing and then on the 10 month we're going to we're going to unveil and implement it'd be easier if we just say we're going to start um, a first prototype in the first month or the second month and push it out there and get feedback from it and you know kind of a wright brothers sort of air first flight of airplane and let it crash and burn and then we we learn from that and then we we get the next one out and we get the next one out and we get the feedback that comes along with that um, we could create almost five cycles in a 10 month span and we can learn so much and actually by the end of it be a lot farther and faster than we would have if we would have just waited in that planning phase too long so teaching uh, my you know teaching the team that i get to work with this is the steps that we're going to do to you know go through this and again it's a copy pasting the steps work for everything um really i think has been something that helps us to go faster in the long run it, it reminds me you talked about it, it comes from the business sector like Six Sigma and process oriented and, and truly trying to make things as streamlined as possible and as succinct to solve an identified problem. And it, it does, it works in the business world. So why wouldn't it work in the educational space? But on the flip side, I hear people every day and who say, we spend too much time thinking, too much time talking about it. We just need to do it. What about the kids you have in front of you today? They're going to miss out if you're taking all this time to think about it and get it right. What is the comeback to that? No, that, that, that's exactly what this is, is it is about doing. We have to, we have to be in that stage to, to let students flourish, um, let, let things happen naturally and, and let it progress. I know for me, um, and, and uh, you know, here's another name drop, like Bobby Dodd and I continually have conversations. Bobby Dodd is a principal um, at one of the largest high schools in the state of Ohio. We're actually gonna have coffee on Saturday. Here we go, we're gonna, we're gonna get together on a Saturday and and uh, talk probably talk a lot of education, but you know the, the interesting thing that, that he said is is you know we we tend to sometimes get let's say in a department of ten teachers let's say in a math department two will come forward and say I want to work on this initiative. In the past, I know that I have gone to them and said no, we're not ready yet until we get all ten that want to to do this together. And um, you know I, I found out that's a failure move. You know, if two, two are energetic and ready to go, say yes, let, let, them, let them run with something um, and, you know, give space to, to explore their creativity and their passion and, um, and help give them confidence to come back and share it with their team. And maybe we'll get two more to come out of that too. And we'll be able to grow from that grassroots effort. But um, I think what tends to happen is, is we hold teachers back and the same thing could happen where we, we, a teacher lets, you know, holds back a couple students. And then you see that fire that starts to kind of burn out and, and people's passions start to get extinguished and, and, and then that frustration starts to fester. Instead of us saying, yes, hey, lay, but, you know, I'm going to find the money later. I'm going to find the means later. We're going to figure this out, but I've got to let you go because, I, again, that's kind of like, I think, why we want educators, also want kids to be in that place of, you know, moving towards something that they, they want to enjoy and do. Were you like this when you were a classroom teacher? Were you always looking to, to push things forward and always looking for the next best thing and ways to implement? Or were you content being who you were and what you were with what you were doing? Well, no, I, I, I was not content. And I think that, again, this, the school saw that in me. Um, so I, I didn't have, I, I, like I told you, I was a high school math teacher. Um, I taught a couple of algebra classes, but I got to team teach a math science class. Um, and and we, we were able to, um, you know, I got 25 students. You had 25 students. We, our classes, classes were back to back. Sometimes I took all 50 students in my classroom for two periods and we did some work and it was on, um, some physics, kind of basic physics and some, you know, algebra two concepts. And then I got to team teach with a math and English teacher, uh, with an English teacher. And we did some business concepts and team building. But in both of those situations, it was, we get to design what the curriculum is going to be. We get to excite students on what that's going to be. And every year looked different, which I thought was awesome. It, it, that is amazing. It, it sounds like in your life, at least in your profession, you really implement the, the scientific method through all that you do. You identify a problem, you come up with a hypothesis, you try it out. If it doesn't work, you try again. 
but there are, there are teachers out there and I'm sure you experience this. You know, you speak at conferences all the time that say, man, this is amazing. If only my principal, if only my leader believe what you believe, if only they let me go out and try some different things, but I'm in a box, I have to follow the, the script. I have to do whatever has always been done. How do I break free? I mean, is there an answer to how an individual teacher can take this and, and embrace the idea of thinking through the process of change? Yeah, and I, I think that's again where like, you know, Ray Hughart and I had conversations and, and so she's, she, um, you know, implements the grid method and that's part of the teach, the teach better. And one day I, I told her, I said, I want to play devil's advocate for you. I said, you're doing these little cutesy activities and you're doing these different things. And, you know, um, you know, you should, I, I should be walking by your classroom and there should be books and kids should be working in rows and, and things like that. And I said, respond that, that back to me. And it was so neat because, you know, she just, or, you know, usually we're, we're talking about other things and there's a light tone to, to uh, you know, when I talk to her and listen to her. But in that instance, she went into a very, very stringent, strict, like, I got this. And there was a confidence in her voice. And I'll tell you what, I'm not her principal, but if she came and talked to me with that confidence about, hey, I got this, my, my, my lessons are tied to the standards, um, we're, letting, we're, we're differentiating, we're letting kids explore, we're, we're still assessing them, I'm, take, I'm collecting assessments, I'm reporting their feedback, they're learning from that. Everything that still would check a box from type of evaluative system or traditional system, she had plus more. Um, and so, you know, I think that you have to you have to know first of all your craft, and you have to you have to do that. But then I think you also have to to go and say I know what's right, and and go and, and politely have that you know with collegial collegiality have that conversation with that building principal, um, and it's going to look abnormal. You know, I'm sure that all of her, you know. There, there are sure, you know, sometimes when we, when we think outside the box and do these things, it, you know, it's going to raise questions and concerns by parents, maybe some of our students, definitely colleagues that might be across the hallway. But we have to be a firm to say, I know this is the right thing to do. Um, this is something that I want to do. It's going to keep an, a passion for me. And we got to try and explore it. And I, I think that they have to have that boldness that goes with it. That's good. And I... I feel so bad for Ray because I know her ears are ringing over there in Chicago right now, but I'm going to keep using her because she is, she is a good prototype for this. Um, she is a classroom teacher who we talk about the grid method at, the, at early on. She, she wasn't a believer and she had to dig into it and say, let me understand this. Let me figure this out. But you know, something that really resonated with me in, in your story there, um, it was a connection I made. I was speaking, uh, I want to say it was in Nashville earlier this year and it was in Nashville. And I had a woman come up to me and say this, similar to the question I asked you, this is all great. I feel empowered. I want to go do this stuff, but my leader won't let me do anything different. And my question to her was, well, what do you want to do different? And her response was everything. Everything is never going to get, <laughs> is, is never going to change. I think it's important, you know, you talk about Ray, how she had this confidence and this laser focus. She knew exactly what she wanted to change, why she wanted to change it, and the research behind it. You mm -hmm. have to have this laser focus and you have to know what you're doing and why, no matter what it is, you have to identify the hill you're going to die on and have intention behind it. Is that the essence behind design thinking is here is the problem. Let's tackle that and then move on. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I, I, and I've seen it, I've seen it, I've seen it work. I get to experience it in its work. Um, I, 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 when I, when I first came to this district, that was my first sort of, you know, um, foray into to talking with this, uh, this, the team that I work with is I'm going to teach you design thinking concepts because that's how my brain thinks. And um, so when you approach me, if you can, if, you know, know that this, I'm going to ask you these 10 questions and know that we're going to, we're going to tackle things this way. And um, you know, it, I, like I said, it, it feels clunky at first, but after a while you start to kind of realize it and it, and it makes sense. Um, but, but I, I love, you're right. I love this idea about, also, you can't change a thousand things at once. You have to, you have to be focused on those, those few things. Do them deeply um, with fidelity. You know, um, I think about this idea about you know, spinning plates all the time. I, I have that visual analogy of you know, that we're all spinning plates you know, and, and you know, we tend to kind of spin a plate over here and then we step away from it and we go to the next issue and we haven't spent time to, to freeze that. You know, there, there's research that says 
that um, things have to, in a culture, have to be unfrozen before you can change it, but then you gotta refreeze it back into the, to the culture, into the system. And we don't tend to do that. And then what happens is we walk away from it and they, six months later we go, well, whatever happened to that thing? People didn't, people didn't follow through with it or people aren't still doing it as if it was their fault when it was our fault for not building those extra steps afterwards to say, how are we gonna make sure it happens so that when I step away, it's still gonna stay there and intact. That's so good because it goes back to the idea of I wanna change everything and people don't realize that <laughs> that is an even bigger problem sometimes than changing nothing. Because when you're changing everything, it's, we talk about the pendulum in education. And those of us that have been in education for 20 or so years, we know things disappear simply because we take our eye off the ball. Right. Six months go by, six years go by, 20 years go by, and we, we remember that good thing we were doing. We run back over to catch it again. And yep. it just keeps bouncing back and forth and instead of adding layers and just continuing to, to make things better and building on what we already know. That, that's, that's wisdom right there. That's, that's great. That's awesome. So, so what is next for you right now? I mean, you're, you're killing life right now. You're, it seems like you're happy as can be. Your design thinking is obviously rubbing off on your wife. She's questioning your every move on who you're bringing over to the house. Right, you're, right. you're speaking all over the place. I know you're um, on the ASDD board, like you mentioned, you're speaking at that conference in LA. Hopefully we'll be able to connect more there. Yeah. Um, you're just doing, you're doing a lot right now. What, what is, what's, what's clawing inside of you? What's that next big thing you just want to make sure you get out there? So, yeah, so it's, this has been a labor, labor of love for me. It's been um, kind of been writing a book and um, you know, it, it, this is the, the, the downfall is, is that I just want to write the perfect book, which means, you know, it, it, it just doesn't feel like it's ever going to get started. You that know, like, design thinking is your demise. Like these, these all represent a, a, a page of value, you know, you know a, an idea. And I just keep adding, you know, another thought every now and then to it, but it stays in this, this, you know, stack of index cards versus getting out on paper. And, you know, once it, once I decide I'm ready to go and write, it's, it's going to be fast. But to be honest with you, every day it feels like there's a new index index card that I feel like adding to it. And I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready to write yet. Why, why does um, it have to just be one? That, that seems like it's an entire anthology there, man. You're, you're Go right. for it. You're right. <laughs> like I said, it's a, it's a passion. It's a passion right there. But that, that's been something that kind of, you know, kind of sits on the shelf and comes back out and, and you know, something I get excited about. And, you know, it, you know I, maybe if you call it a hobby and you just kind of come to it every now and then you step away from it and you come back to it again. Um, ASCD is, is something really that um, I, I remember as a first year teacher, I, you know, I got my hands on this educational leadership journal and I, you know, I was, and I remember reading through it. And at the time it was, you know, just the, the educational greats. And to me at that time, there were only like five, right? There, there, there wasn't a hundred like there are today, you know, like, and you know, I remember Doug Reeves back then. And I said, one day I'm going to hopefully get to meet Doug Reeves, you know, and, or hear him at a conference was, was kind of it. And, and, and now I get to talk to, you know, I talked to Doug and Doug, when he comes to Columbus, you know, he, you know, we, we, we meet up or, you know, we're at a conference and we'll find each other. And, um, you know, that's just been, um, you know, something that's been cool. Ken O'Connor came to town. Um, and I remember reading his book on grading fixes back 15 years ago. And he comes back in town and says, Hey, let's have dinner. I heard, you know, I'm, I'm coming to Columbus. And I said, dinner, let me take you to a hockey game. So we went to a hockey game together. And I thought I'm sitting here with Ken O'Connor. Um, but so ASCD has been this, this thing that has helped me in my career, and now it's my chance to give back. And, and what I think about every day is, is when I think about the organization, what, I, what I'm, what I'm specific, specifically giving back to is those young educators that are out there. Um, like you said, they're, 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 they're on an island. They're by themselves, um, maybe because they're in a small district or maybe because they're in a district without that support. Um, and as I get to know the organization more, it's not just in the, in, in the United States, but you know, even when we, we go to this national conference, there, there are, I don't know, and I'm, you know, I don't know how many countries represented, but people are coming from other countries to, to come here. And, you know, I, I, I take, don't take that lightly being on the board. You know, I, I, I walk into it thinking I'm an ambassador for them. I'm speaking on their behalf. I'm representing them and, and when we're sitting at board meetings to make decisions on, you know, how can we, we be the best and, you know, um, and provide that best support to educators around the world. And, and I don't take that light. So, you know, I, I really want to give it its time and its due and really understand it, its purpose and, and where we can take it to the next level. We just, we just hired a new CEO 
um, January 1st. And so um, it's just been exciting just to kind of see how his brain thinks and, and kind of what he has in store for the future. That's, that's awesome. And I'm going to, I'm going to compliment you again. Uh, I'm sorry if it feels like there's blowing smoke here, but you're saying so much stuff that it resonates with me and I, and I appreciate it. Because one of the things that I've gotten pushback on, especially recently is celebrating quote unquote edu celebrities. And I'm just going to put this out here and I'm going to say it. People are going to listen to this and they're going to what dismiss it. I don't care. I'm going to say it. Thank God for edu celebrities or whatever you want to call them. Because we are in this a day and age right now where teachers are walking away from this profession in record numbers. We need people who are going to inspire that next generation to keep going, to stick with it, to celebrate what they're doing and to remember their core. If you think about the music industry, Bruce Springsteen and Prince and Michael Jackson, these people that put on these huge concerts inspired a generation of musicians. We need people that are going to inspire a generation of teachers. Dismiss everything they say. I, I don't care if you don't like them or not, but most of the people that are complaining about the edgy celebrity movement, if you will, are, are probably the people that need to move on so that the next generation can continue to be inspired and push the test goal. So I appreciate the fact that you are embracing that role and understanding the power that other people have to influence and empower others. So that was me speaking. Don't blame Neil for that. That was me, but I, I just appreciate. And the fact that you open up the Gupta bed and breakfast for people Absolutely. like that to stop by in Columbus, man. And uh, that's awesome. So just keep doing that. Keep doing what you're doing. No, you know, and, and it's true. I mean, you know, you, it, you know, it, and one minute you're reading a book by, by, you know, some of the, these uh, educators and, and then the next minute you're meeting them at a, at a conference and, and you, you get a different dimension of it. And then they come later and say, call me sometime or text me or, or email me or feel free to reach out to me. And, and then you realize that it gives you that hope. I mean, because there are people out there that you can, you know, lean on and, and uh, when, when life gets stressful and they, and you, they, they've been there before, they, they, they know what it feels like. And um, sometimes that's what you need is that, that just kind of that push, that encouragement to say, move on and you got this. It, it's so true. And for people that don't understand it, it, truly what we're talking about, first of all, the fact that you're listening to this tells me you probably do understand that a little bit because you're listening to the stories of these people. But if you want to pay it forward, it, Neil, you're a perfect example of that. I mean, truly this conversation tonight happened because I just reached out to you and said, hey man, can we connect? And you're like, yeah, let's do it. And you have no idea how much that fires me up just to say, wow. Somebody thinks I'm important enough to just sit down and have a conversation with. They put value in me. And, and that is what it's all about. That's what humanity is all about, is finding value. And as educators, our job is to help other human beings find value in who they are so they can pay it forward. And that's what it's all about. I mean, you talked about, you, you know, we talk about, you know, educators and, and we talk about, you know, teacher burnout. We talk about people leaving the profession. So we, we, we are talking uh, today we're in our district, we're talking about the idea about the need for self-care. And, you know, there are examples about eating healthy and getting sleep and, um, you know, making sure you, you, you exercise and doing those things. And all those things are good. And yes, you should do all those things. At the same time, I have also found out and, you know, that my car sometimes, you know, will say like, it's time to go home, Neil, and you're going to go home and you're going to sit on the couch and you're going to feel better if you just sit on the couch and watch TV and eat that bag of potato chips, or if you go to bed um, but you know what? You wake up and you still then feel, you feel crappy. And, you, and, and after the bag of chips and you sit in front of the TV, you still got the same stress level that you had before. So I don't know if it's always about that as being self-care. Um, you know, you could go, you know, to the gym and go exercise and then you get done and, you know, you're all sweaty, but you're still stressed. And so it's illogical, but, you know, you, you, it's this idea about go spend an hour on a Twitter chat. Go, go to a conference and actually connect with people. And, you know, it's not about misery loves company. It's about hope and, you know, uh, talking to each other about remembering what your why is on you got, why you got into education. And you walk out from those things and it, it's, it's this like math equation that doesn't feel like it makes sense. But wait a minute, you're telling me to go do more work, you know, not go home, go spend less time with my family, but, but spend time with other educators and that's going to, and, and that's actually going to make me less stressed. And the answer is yes, it is. And, and, you know, once you get that to, to talk to people about that is who are you leaning on and who are you talking to, to, to give yourself that, that hope and, and rise, you know, unless people really understand that you don't, then, you know, I think you just kind of sit and you spiral. 
It's good. You know, I, I go to a church and one of their taglines is step out of the rows and get into circles. And, and that's exactly what you're talking about is find those connections. And that's so hard for me. I, I, I truly have a hard time opening up to other people and really forming relationships and connections. But it's so right. Once you take that first step, it, it, it feels like home. You start to find, I know it's, it's cliche nowadays to say you find your tribe, but you do. And don't knock it till you try it, man. <laughs> you got to find your tribe. You know, I was just reading, um, you were on one of the, the chats tonight and you were talking about, I, I believe the question was something about which social media do you use the most? And you talked about Twitter and Voxer. Voxer is basically Twitter on steroids. It's Twitter with a voice to it because that helps you connect with others. Is, is that kind of like your medicine that keeps feeding your soul to, to help you come back every day? Twitter, Voxer, just those connections with people sometimes you've never met face to face? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so so uh, you know, I'm one one of the co co facilitators of Lead Up Chat on Saturday mornings. There's a Lead Up Chat at 9:30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and Jeff Veal and Todd Schmidt. So Jeff Veal's in Texas, and Todd Schmidt's in California, and Paul Erickson's in Kansas. And I mean, we probably talk four or five times a week. Um, and Voxer is this this audio app. You know, for those that aren't aware of it. So my wife, who's not in education, it's gotten to the point where if I'm playing boxer around the house, she knows their, what their voices are. Oh, you're talking to Jeff. Oh, that must be Todd. Tell, tell Todd hi, you know. Um, and all of a sudden, it becomes a family, um, and you're having these conversations. And again, one minute we're talking about football, and we're, we're, we're trash-talking each other about our college teams. But the next minute, we're saying, hey, look, I got this issue going on, and what would you guys do in this situation? And here's what's important about that is that, you know, I remember in, um, in, in one of my graduate classes, the professor said, you've got to find people that are outside of your district that you can talk to about what's going on. You can't always talk to the people in your district. And she said, even go find somebody as far as another state goes. And um, because they, you need that perspective to be able to say, we do it differently. This is not how we do it over here. We do it this way. So there are some things that are different, but sometimes it's, it's the same. But um, if you don't have that ability to talk to people um, out, you know, that are in your, your profession and but kind of a far away removed from, from your district, I think then, you know, that also helps provide that layer of strength and um, that you're able to kind of feel like um, you've got people you can count on and lean on. Um, I talked to Sarah Johnson. I talked to Ray Hughart. Uh, like I said, Megan Anderson. I mean, it, these are people that I talk to um, practically, you know, once a day and it, it's awesome. It, it's so cool. Just, I feel like, Education nowadays is like this huge Venn diagram with all these circles that just connect. And all, I mean, you keep mentioning these people. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got this great relationship with that person too. And it's, it's just, it's so good. So I'm going to challenge everybody when you're done listening to this podcast today, if you're on your way to work, don't just go into your classroom or your office or wherever you're going and sit down and start working. Go find somebody <laughs> and actually say hi and get to, get to know them a little bit better um, and start a new connection. If you're listening to this on your way home, sit down and actually have a face-to-face -face conversation with your kids or your spouse or pick up the phone and call that friend that you haven't talked to in a long, long time or jump on a, a Twitter chat tonight. Do something that's going to stretch your connections a little bit. That's, I mean, that's what I'm taking out of this. And I don't know if that's, if I'm stealing your thunder or not, because I told you when, when we wrap up these, these interviews, I always ask people, give me your mic drop moment. Tell me, tell me what you want us to take away. And that's what I've taken away. Is that what you want us to walk away with? Or do you have something else? I mean, what is, what's that thing right now that you, when people hear your voice and hear your words, you want them to associate with you? That's just going to make their lives better. So, so yeah, this, this is perfect. So this, this is going to be awesome because it's going to weave all the conversation. I think that, that uh, we've talked through, I told you about that one um, uh, keynote that, that I was asked to do on where the failure, you know, tell, talk about all your failures. And, um, you know, it really, it was this idea about me early on in my leadership where I felt like I had to have the answers to everything. I thought that if you're the leader, you have to, you have to be able to one that goes in and, you know, almost is like, yeah, going into the burning building and you're, you're going in there, you know, by yourself to go save the day. Um, and so most of the time, my, my leadership style was, um, go in there based on what I thought was the problem based on what I thought needed to be the solution. I created the, the answers and, and went in there and took care of things. Then I left and, and then I'd find out later it flopped. And, and then I realized over time and, and, you know, 
through, through a lot of scars, that it's about collaboration. It's about coming together, both to understand what the question is, to, to empathize with what's, what's occurring, and then to, to gather the, the right people together for solution. So there, my, my, favorite pro, uh, my, my favorite quote these, uh, that, that's been probably around for the past three years is um, this African proverb that says, if you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go together. And, you know, that has been, the reason I love it is because I was the guy that was fast and alone. And I would say my success today in, it's this connections idea about if we're going to go far, you know, then, then we go together. And so I go back to the book that I'm writing. It was interesting because I'm like, I'm talking about, I'm, 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 ta I'm talking about all the different um, things where I, I made the filler where I would have done differently. And I would say that the, the title is going to be farther together. You know, it's this idea of how do we go farther together? So my, my mic drop moment, my, my thing that I would say is, is um, I don't think life was meant for us to be doing it in isolation. I don't think education is um, a, a profession where we can shut the door and just do our own thing. Um, we need to be in a, a collaborative environment. And so to your point, um, if it's tomorrow that or today, that you look, um, you know, across the hallway and open that door and, and, and collaborate with somebody in your building. Uh, maybe tomorrow it's looking at somebody, um, maybe in another building, but in your community. But but keep spreading that out and and keep looking for those opportunities to to build those connections. Um, after a while, you say, well, I'm the, the new new person, and um, I need to find some mentors. And after a while, you find out that you're you're becoming the older person, and it's time for you to help mentor others. Um, but but we all do this together. That's awesome. That's good, man. That was very good. And if you're still struggling, you're like, man, but I don't like any of these people I work with or that I associate with. Just go to Columbus and Absolutely. knock on Neil's door. He's got an extra bedroom. He'll welcome you in. You join his community, right? <laughs> give, give me 24 hours to tell my wife. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair. So, so how can people connect with you? How can people track you down other than knocking on your door in the middle of the night? Absolutely. So yeah, find me on Twitter. So I'm at Dr. Neil Gupta, um, find me on Voxer. Um, it's also Dr. Neil Gupta for that also. Um, I'd love to connect. That'd be great. Um, you can go to the Teach Better website, um, teachbetter.com, and you'll, you'll find a, a link there for uh, the Speakers Network, and there'll be some more information about me and, and uh, um, the rest of the team, too, on, on possibly coming out and speaking at schools. That's awesome. And, and all of that information, the, the link to his blogs, all that stuff will be down in, in the show notes, whether you're watching this on YouTube or listening to it on the podcast, it's all going to be there. If you didn't catch, catch it when he said it, you can read it, cut and paste it, copy it and, and connect with him. It says, um, Neil, you're just an awesome, awesome dude, man. I, I appreciate you taking time out of your day, out of your life to practice what you preach and really connect with me and connect with Everybody that's listening to this, it, it means a lot and you're making a huge difference. I appreciate it. Well, that's great. We're going to get to see each other next month at ASCD Empower. That's going to be awesome. Let's do it, man. Sounds great.